Let's talk about modals within Ionic 3. So I've made a new application by running Ionic start my modal. And we're going to do that based on the blank template. After which I'm going to CD into my modal. And then we're going to open it up in VS Code. Now we can head over to source, pages and home.ts. This is our home page. And within the home page, we'll need to import modal controller from Ionic Angular. As well as that, we'll need to inject modal controller by saying private modal modal controller inside of our constructor. I'm going to remove nav controller from the imports because we won't be needing it in this example. Then inside of our home.html, let's change the title to modal. And I'm also going to add a blue color for the nav bar. Secondly, inside of our ion content, we'll have a button. And the button will simply say open modal. We'll add the ion button attribute, and then we'll also give it a click event. When the user clicks the button, we'll say open modal. So let's write the open modal function inside of home.ts. If we write open modal, inside of here we can say this dot modal, and then we get access to either config or create. We'll use the create method. And if we take a look at what the create method takes, it takes a component. Now the component is of type any, so that means we can use lazy loading in the same way that we do with our nav controller. So let's pass in a string. The string here would have to be the name of a page. At the moment, we currently have no other pages. Let's fix this. So inside of our command line, we can run ionic g page, and the page will simply be called modal page. If we take a look at our modal page.ts, the name of the class is modal page, so let's copy that and add it to our this.modal.create. We can then assign the creation of the modal to a variable. So let's say const my modal is equal to this.modal.create. Finally, to show the modal, we'll have to say my modal.present. So if we save the file, we can then run Ionic in the browser by running Ionic Lab. If we were then to click open modal, we find we have our modal page. If we remove the slash Ionic Lab from localhost, we can check to see how this would look on a device. And we can see that if we were on a larger device than a mobile phone screen, we would have a common modal. This would include the backdrop. And if we click the backdrop, we can close the modal. If we add slash Ionic Lab to the end of our localhost 8100, we find though that we can't currently get rid of this modal page. So let's fix that by changing our modal page to add something called ion buttons. Now ion buttons allows us to add buttons to our navbar and align them at particular locations. So if we say button and within the button we'll have close, we'll give it the ion button attributes and we'll also give it a click event. And inside of the click event, we'll add close modal. And we can add the end to our ion buttons, and this will actually align the button to the end of the navbar. So if we open the modal again, we now see we have a close button. Obviously, if we click it, it's not going to work because we haven't implemented the function. So let's implement that function. Let's add close modal. And to close the modal, we'll need to import something called view controller. I'm going to remove the nav controller because we won't need that. So I'll get rid of it out of our constructor. And then we'll be using nav params later on. So I'm going to change that from public to private. And then after injecting the nav params, let's inject private view of type view controller. We can then use this dot view dot dismiss inside of our close model function. This will dismiss the current view, i.e. the modal page, and we'll be back on the home screen. Let's take a look at this inside of the project. If we press open modal and then click close, we of course dismiss the modal view. Let's head back to our home.ts and now we'll have a look at passing some data from the modal itself over to the modal page. So if we add a comma after declaring the component when we create our modal, we can add some data. The data can be of type any, so we could just add a number, a string, or an object. Let's create an object by using const my data. 
is equal to, and then within the data we'll simply have a name of Paul Halliday, and occupation, developer. Now this data could be anything, but at the moment we are just simply going to have name and occupation inside of an object. To pass that object along to the next page, we can make an object here and say the data object is equal to my data. This means when we come to get the data in the next page, we can get the data object from the nav params. We'll have a look at that inside of our modal page. So inside of our modal page.ts, we can hook into the ion view did load or the ion view will load lifecycle hook. And then we can say this dot nav params dot get. And that matches up to our this dot modal dot create. And then we pass in the name of the modal page and any data that we want to pass along. If this instead was name, we'd have to change this to name inside of our modal page. For now, we'll put it back to being data. After we get the data, I'm going to log out the data. So let's say const data is equal to this dot now params dot get data. So if we now click open modal, we get the object name Paul Halliday and occupation developer. That comes from the modal page.ts and it's fired by saying console log data and data is this dot now params dot get and the data object. When we are closing the modal, we can also pass some data back to the home page. We can do this by making some data inside of close modal. So perhaps inside of close modal, we would have a different set of data. And we could make that equal to name John Doe. And John Doe's occupation is a milkman. So at this stage, we could say this dot view dot dismiss and we can pass along some data. You can see that we can also pass other things along when we are dismissing the view. But if we add data here and save the file, we could then head back over to our home.ts. And inside of home.ts, we made an instance of the modal by saying const my modal is equal to this.modal.create. And if we take a look at the create function, we can see that it returns a modal. This is shown by the colon modal as a return type of this function. This type is inferred by TypeScript when we hover over our my modal, but we could import modal from Ionic Angular and say my modal is of type modal. Within the my modal, we can say my modal on did dismiss and that's called whenever the view controller has successfully dismissed. And the view controller in this instance is the modal page, which is here, this.view.dismiss. And we're passing along the data. So we can say, when it has dismissed, we can hook into the callback and we can console.logout any data. So if we have a look inside of the browser, we first open the modal and we get name Paul Halliday with occupation of developer. And that's because it's logged out in the ion view will load. Then when we close the modal, we get name John Doe, occupation of milkman. And that's because in home.ts, we've hooked into this on did dismiss event, which has the data callback that we can then log out to the console. Similar to other lifecycle events, we also have my modal dot on will dismiss and this is called whenever the view is about to dismiss so we could console.log I'm about to dismiss and then we could log out the data and in the other example we could console.log I have dismissed and then log out the data once again if we save this we see the standard result and now if we clear the console we get I'm about to dismiss first then the data, and then we have I have dismissed, then the data once again. So there might be different times where you need to act with the data as soon as possible, and we could put that in on will dismiss, and other times where it's not as important, we can have that on, on did dismiss. There are also other use cases for the lifecycle hooks, but now let's have a look at options. 
So we can import from Ionic Angular modal options. And we can say const my modal options is of type modal options. And that is equal to, let's also refactor our my data to say my modal data so that we can keep our variables consistent. And then if we take a look at the modal options interface, we see that we have a variety of options that we can set on the modal. For example, we can determine whether we want to show the backdrop. We can also make it so that people can't click the backdrop to dismiss the modal. And we also have a couple of animations that we can set on enter and leave. For now, let's simply say enable backdrop dismiss is equal to false. That will mean that people can't click on the backdrop to close the modal. And the only way that they'd be able to close it is by clicking the close button at the top right. We can pass the options along if we add a comma after our data and then add my modal options. If we take a look at this once again on a bigger device, we could open the modal and now we see the backdrop. We showed beforehand that we could click the backdrop to get rid of the modal, but now if we click the backdrop, it doesn't close. As always, if we click close at the top, that will close the modal and we get the dismiss events as well as the objects. That about wraps up modals within Ionic 3.